Paul Scala's bio. Here he is, is a certified global career development facilitator. That is a mouthful, Paul. <laughs> I love that <laughs> <Yeah>. title. <laughs> He's a work search author and the founder of Scala Career Consultants. Since 1999, he has assisted over 3,000 job search ranging from C-suite executives to college students. He has helmed the adult professional education programs for Fairleigh Dickinson University and in government workforce development at the One Stop Career Centers. Um, prior to his career in coaching, he spent 15 years in corporate aviation, and he has a BS in psychology from the Florida Institute of Technology, and he lives in Morris County, New Jersey, with a very large snow pile next to his house with his husband and his teenage son. So, Paul, take it away. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Newton Merrill. Um, today, we're going to talk about listening skills, and in particular, how do we use listening skills to be better at networking? So uh, I know a couple of you on the call have heard this before. Um, so it'll be great as a review. For those of you who have not, we'll see it um, for the first time, but know that we are going to be spending a lot of time not looking at the slideshow, uh, if I can get it started, um, there we go, but um, talking to each other. And uh, Merle's given some of my background. So let's talk about listening skills. And I want to start with what do most conversations look like? And, and I don't know if it's been this way for you, but I've noticed over the years, a lot of times it's, let me tell you about me, because I'm doing this and me, 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 but you know enough about me. What do you think of me? And I don't think that's the right way for us to approach networking specifically, but relationship building of any kind, really. So I'd like to see us try and change that conversation. And, you know, a couple of people that I, I think of some valuable things to say related to that. Um, Janet Pedersen is a communications author. She's also written a couple of books related to job search. Um, people are more interested in talking about themselves than listening to what others are saying. And I think that's really a powerful statement for us to recognize that if we know that really everyone likes to talk about themselves, if I take the time to stop, ask questions and listen, the person that I'm talking with is going to feel much more valued, much more important, and you are going to get to know them better by doing that, right? Um, to be kind is more important than to be right. Many times what people need is not a brilliant mind that speaks, but a special heart that listens. And I think that is another really potent quote that speaks to the value of taking the time to stop and listen. And I believe it's an art that we have lost, right? So... If we take the time to listen, it's going to make networking a lot more, uh, a lot easier. So we're gonna talk first a little bit about how to make ourselves memorable. Then we'll look at some of the different listening types. And what we'll do is we'll talk about each of those three different types of listening, internet, uh, intentional, reflective, and curious or active. Then we're gonna go practice those. And then we're gonna come back together and talk about it. And in the end, my expectation and hope is that you will get to know at least three or four people much better at the end of this phone call than you know, or the Zoom call than you know at the moment. And the way we're gonna do that is by practicing our 30 second introductions, but more importantly, practicing our listening skills as someone else is sharing their 30 second introduction. So that's how things are gonna go. Let's lo look at the communication process though, because I think this is something that's important. Oh, I didn't realize that's cutting off there. I'll have to fix that later. Um, so, and let me just change this for a second so my screen, I can see things better. There we go. <sighs> Listening, communication really is a two-way street. And most often the issue is not the message, but the issue is whether or not the listener 
has enough common experiences and knowledge of the message to understand and properly interpret what the speaker is saying. And then almost all the time we lose the feedback because people don't take the time to reflect back to the speaker. Here's what I understood you to say. Is that accurate, right? So we need to make sure that we have those common experiences. As a speaker, we need to use those common experiences that others will have, that our listener will have, so that they can more easily understand what we're saying. And then as the listener, we need to make sure we're providing that feedback. So we've got this active loop that's taking place, right? I'm sure many of you have seen the um, statistics there on the right side about uh, silent messaging. And this was research that was done back in the 1970s. I have to tell you that um, there's not definitive research that's come out that's newer, but I have seen a couple of studies recently done like in the, the 2000s um, that dispute these statistics a little bit. So what Albert um, Merebian found was that at an initial meeting, first time we see each other, 7% of what we interpret from communication is through the words that are used. That's it, just 7%. 38% of what we interpret and hear and understand as the message comes from the tone of voice that the speaker is using. And the remaining 55% is the body language that's involved in that communication. The more recent studies say, yeah, that's accurate for a first time meeting. But when we're talking with somebody that we have a relationship with, the numbers probably change and they probably change to more like 15 or maybe 20% can be determined from the words that are used. Probably still about 35 or 40% is in the tone of voice. And that leaves about 40% or so for body language. So words take on more value. Body language takes on a little less value as we get to know each other and talk to each other. Um, but they haven't been able to really codify those percentages yet. There's, they're still saying they think it's just in those ballparks. So what I want us to take from here is we have to spend time in the entire loop of communication. We need to choose the right words for our message. We need to give it, deliver it in the right way. As listeners, we need to hear it and think about it, understand it, and then reflect back that meaning to the speaker to make sure that the message was heard correctly and understood. When you think about that in terms of how especially Gen Y and Gen Z communicate, mostly by text or email, and more and more how we communicate professionally, again, mostly email, how much of the communication process are we losing? How much information is not being transmitted because we're only using words? How easy is it for people to misunderstand, misinterpret the meaning of what you're saying because we're missing out on those things? So um, throughout I'm going to ask, you know, does anybody have any questions? Please feel free to unmute yourself, make a comment, ask your question. And this is the first of those points. But also, if at some point something's really burning and you need to interrupt me, feel free to do so. Um, I can't see your faces at the moment. So just talk. Who? Anybody have any questions? Yeah, Paul, it's Jurgen. Good morning. Hey, Jurgen, go ahead. Uh, well, you knew that I was going to ask a question anyways, but... <laughs> Um, do, do the uh, percentages that you're showing there uh, change drastically when you're in a uh, Zoom type of an environment? I've not actually seen any specifics on that. Um, based on my knowledge and research, what I would say to you is that um, there probably is a little bit of a loss 
in the, the body language because we don't see enough of the body and because our cameras may not be um, acute enough to pick up on a lot of the subtleties that our eye would see when we're in person. Uh, but I don't think it's significant enough to be of a, a major issue. Uh, that, that's my uneducated opinion. Okay, that good. makes sense. Thank you. Good, good question. Thanks. Anyone else? Uh, yes, uh, I have a... All right. P yes, Paul, Michael. Um, this is the one that's come up in the past, but maybe this group hasn't addressed it is, when you're dealing with somebody via Zoom and they don't turn their camera on, you have no feedback facially as to how that person's reacting at all to what you're saying. So you don't know how to exp how to express yourself. I, mean, I don't know if there's a better way. It's a great point, it. Michael, and, and you're absolutely right. And um... That's why I do try to, especially in networking meetings or in, in situations where everyone in the group is expected to be participating, I strongly encourage that you do use your camera. Now, there are times where it's either not appropriate or um, you know, you're maybe not putting the best foot forward because of the background or, or whatever. But ultimately what we need to think about and realize is that when we're, when we're in a Zoom meeting, we are working and you need to present yourself in the same way that you would if you were in a conference room with your team, with your manager, that's right? And that means to be present, you need to be seen. Um, so I, I strongly encourage that. Um, other, someone else was trying to chime in, who is that? Uh, that, was, that was me, Paul. <clears throat> Do you hold any stock in the old statement that, that What's said, what's meant, what's heard, and what's understood could be actually four different things? Absolutely. <laughs> okay. And, and, and um, I have had an example of that in the past, but for timing purposes, I've, I've taken it out. But yes, we could take the exact same statement, the same four, five, seven words, put them on the screen, and people will interpret them in one way or another. Now add in the voice, and you'll get three or four different interpretations. Um, and and the one example I can actually real quick do, um, you know, you're, you're calling to get a background check uh, on someone and the, the company has a policy, they don't give background checks, right? But the person answers the phone and says, oh, you wanna talk about Paul and get a reference on Paul? Man, I so wish that I could give you that reference because he's really a great guy but our company for, forbids that. I have to pass you on to HR, hold on. Or you wanna talk about Paul? I don't know that I can say anything. Hold on, I gotta give you to HR, right? What have you learned about Paul based on those two different responses? And that's purely tone of voice that's changed. So, Yes, you can get absolute different meanings based on the different tone of voice and the different body language. Anything else, anyone? I was wondering, how do you factor that uh, when, because on Zoom particularly, it's hard to read a room when you are in a room with people. Sometimes, you know, when, when we are live, you know, we might go on a tangent, but we, we could read the, the mood of the room, you know, either withhold what we have to say or maybe switch topic altogether. Any tips as to when dealing with people over Zoom, how do we read the room so that we communicate effectively? Or at least that we are good listener. So, so hopefully um, when you're in a business meeting, the group will be small enough that you can see people's pictures large enough that you can read their, their facial expressions and all. Um, but if it's a situation like this where the, the pictures are so small, it just is very tough. Um, I know a lot of folks who have multiple uh, screens for their computer so that they can have those pictures on a bigger screen that makes them bigger and easier to see and read what people are, are saying through their body language. Um, the best thing I can tell you to do is ask questions. If you're not sure, 
or if you think there are two ways to interpret the meaning of something that's being said, stop the presenter and ask a question because they will be happy to clarify in most cases to ensure that the right message is what's getting across. Good thought, Gene. Thank you. All right. So I want us to take just a couple of minutes to think about our 30 second introduction. What do you say in your introduction that makes you memorable? The brain most easily remembers pictures far more so than they remember anything that's written or said. So in our 30 second introductions, can we say it in such a way that it creates a specific picture for the listener so that they will more easily remember who we are and what we do, right? Remember also that a good introduction is going to beg more questions. It's gonna give just enough information to get people to wanna ask questions and learn more, right? So as you're thinking about your 30 second introduction, what can you say that's gonna cause people to want to question more. For example, you know, I say that I am the expert at project planning your job search. If you want to get your job search moving, call me and we'll figure out how to get it going. Wait a minute, how do you do that, Paul? Right? And that's, I want that be to be your question so that you then come back to me and say, wow, that sounds really interesting, Paul. Can you tell me about your project planning process? Okay, so think about how would you create an introduction that's gonna make it easy for people to remember who you are and easy for them to share with other people as well. Because one of the things we wanna make sure is that as I'm introducing myself to people. I want them to think about who would they know that they think I should meet. And so I want to make it easy for you to introduce me to other people. Questions on this? Okay. Oh, well, I have one comment only because I think it tends to happen with people more in technical fields like I am, where your introduction becomes so full of jargon that the person you're talking to, unless they understand that, does not have a clue really uh, to, as to what it is that you do. Great, great comment, Michael, and you're right. As many of you know, Marty Lapman, he will always tell us we need two sets of introductions. One that's very jargon laden for people in our industry because they'll understand and know what you're talking about, and one that's not. And um, I think I saw on the call, um, Charlotte Ann Owasco. And so whoever gets into a breakout room with Charlotte Ann, you know, hopefully you'll have I'm a moment. I'm smiling, Paul. <laughs> Good. <laughs> hopefully you'll have a moment that the two of you can share a little bit about the difference in the need for those two different introductions. We all know the basics of a 30 second introduction. We could spend a whole hour just talking about what goes into an introduction and how to formulate it. You all been there, done that. Just as a reminder, here are some of the things we wanna think about in our introductions. All right, so now I've basically done the prep work for what we really wanna talk about today. Anything, questions, comments still on anything we've already talked about? Yes, I have a comment. Go ahead. Great. Go ahead, um, Carol. Regarding the introduction, I find it difficult to talk about myself. And I don't know how to phrase that in a, in a way where it's like what you're describing. I wouldn't even know how to begin. Okay. Um, I'll, I'll offer two things. Number one, do your best through this presentation because you'll have an opportunity to share it with a few different people in very small groups of two or three of you and then critique it with each other. So you'll get a chance to, to help maybe perfect it a little bit there. Number two, I know if you call Merle, she'll be happy to help you to, to work on that, or you can always contact me and we can work on it together as well. Is that fair? Okay. 
Yes. Um, great. All right. I see somebody just entered some information about their background into the chat. So I'm trying to watch that a little bit as well. Good. All right. So let's start to talk about the, the primary information for today. And it's these three different types of listening, intentional listening, reflective listening, and active or inquisitive listening. And the hard part for us is going to be to focus on just one of those each time we stop to practice. But that's what I'm going to ask you to try and do is try and spend the time just on the one or, an, oops, sorry, uh, of them at a time. So let's start talking about intentional listening. And um, this is one definition of intentional listening. Listen with our mind, our hearts, and our ears. Another way to think about it, somebody else says, is listen for the sake of listening, not to respond. So when we're doing intentional listening, our goal is not to have a thought, a comment, a response. Our goal is just to focus fully on what that person is saying and absorb it completely rest with it think about it before you even consider a response questions so far okay um, uh, so, paul, so sorry yeah. paul I, I was too slow at getting to the unmute Go ahead, so my, my question paul is um the um uh, practice of listening, um, um, is it influenced by the culture uh, that you're in or from where you derive your roots? I am sure that there are some factors that re relate to that in the process. Um, I've not seen specific research on that, and partly because I've not done that deep of a dive into the research more than anything, to be fair. Um, but yes, I, I would say that there are a lot of cultural factors that go into how well we listen. Um, I think there's a lot of factors that relate to uh, our disposition to a vocation or an avocation. You know, what is the kind of work, the activities that we enjoy? And those, those will impact on our ability to listen as well. Most important for us to remember here, though, Jurgen, is that it is something that we can improve on. It is something that we can actually practice. And in many cases, if you, if you have any kind of a knowledge or practice of mindfulness, you will probably be a better listener. Because mindfulness is about being in the moment, in the present focusing on the other and what's important there, not focusing so much on me. So uh, Jan Pedersen in her communications book says that if I'm going to be an intentional listen, listener, I must listen with a purpose and the purpose is to, be, to understand what's being said, right? Practice listening for understanding, not evaluation. Be aware of the words, the phrases that are distracting. So for example, I don't know if y'all can hear it, I hope not, but my husband's in the other room on a business call himself and I keep getting distracted by his talking, right? He says something, he uses an inflection in his voice or something that it's like, I'm there, I'm not here. But what I have to do as an intentional listener is say, wait a minute, okay, come back. Let that go, forget about it, ignore it, stay here, right? And that's intentional listening. Um, concentrate on what's being said, right? And recognize that listening powerfully may be the key to my success. The better that you learn to listen, the better you will respond to what's going on around you. And the more intelligent you'll sound in most cases, true. All right, questions? So this intentional listening, what are the areas we, we say we can use that, or a common area we can use intentional listening? Um, 
And I will, I, I, this is a, a ridiculous, but a really powerful and important example. Mm -hmm. Listen with intention to what your family is saying to you. I was in a parenting skills class and we were talking about, um, you know, the three or four year old toddler that's just making one hell of a fuss in the grocery store with mom. And, you know, here it is the middle of the winter, the kids all bundled up, they can hardly move, they're restrained in the seat of the, the um, you know, grocery ca carriage and they're screaming bloody murder because they're so uncomfortable. And mom's thinking, what do I have to do to shut this little brat up because she's making or he's making a, a, a scene and all the focus and attention is on me, right? Whereas if that mom or dad in my case would stop and say, why is this kid screaming? What's going on? You might realize in this particular example, the poor kid's overheating. They're so wrapped up in their winter clothes, they're just hot and sweaty and uncomfortable. And of course they would wanna get out of that situation, but they don't know how to say it to you, right? So all they can do is scream. If we were listening with intention, we would be stopping and taking that step back to see what's going on and try and respond more appropriately. In a business meeting, same idea. Is that helpful, Yula? Yulia? I think it was you who was talking. I don't Any know. Other? Go ahead. No, go I ahead. Don't know. I just want to share that. I don't know in that situation you gave the parents, because as parents, we are so judgmental. We want to say what we want for our kids. Stop it. You, you, you're creating such a scene, you know? So we're not doing intentional listening a lot of the times. When right. our kids act that way, that's just what I was, probably not a great example because as parents, we want to intervene. We want to change that situation and make it positive in a very quick way. So, <laughs> so I don't, right. you know, yes, small intentions, but I don't think that's the most, because we want to so much say something to that kid, our kid. So that's, you know, to diffuse the situation to say, um, so we're not going to use intentional listening for that, for all that. Well, we, we need to use it. What I'm saying, need, as I think you are saying, is that we don't use intentional listening oftentimes in that situation. But if right. we were to stop and listen intentionally and take that breath and think twice before responding, we might make a completely different response. And that's the, the, the key or goal here. Okay. Good. Last question or comment before we move on to our first practice. May I, may I say something? Yes, I'll Carol, comment. go ahead. Um, for me, I find that a lot of it has to do with how I'm interpreting what's happening. So if it's if I if I'm approaching it from a perspective on how it's going to affect me, or make me look, or um, something along those lines, then I'm not being open to what is being said. Like That's I'm just right. looking to control what that would mean uh, for me, whatever right. the conversation is. So, and that takes intentional effort to be yes. able to move yourself to the side, to not really take it on a personal level, whether it's business or, or, or with family. And that's something that we're not taught. We don't grow up learning these skills. And so we, we, we become adults and we go out into this workforce, we have children. So we're just not not and, and like you said it is something that has to be learned and can be learned but it's very difficult when you were raised in an environment that did not provide that uh, you're, you're spot on carol you're absolutely spot on right and so my hope for today is that by becoming aware of it practicing these different types of listening skills a couple of times throughout this morning that will help you and me, frankly, because it, it helps me more than you, I think, at this point, um, to remember to be a better listener, to remember to practice my listening skills before I respond. You know, I tend to be a person um, a, as a, a hot-blooded Italian that I tend to wear my emotions on my sleeve and I, you know, I'm the worst liar in the world. 
<laughs> because you can see exactly what I'm not saying in my emotion, right? By practicing listening, I'm going to be able to take that step back and be in better control of my emotions and my responses. Okay, so here's what I wanna do now. We're going to put you all into breakout rooms. There'll be two people, two persons or people per room. And what I'd like you to do is take turns sharing your 30 second introduction with each other. Now, when you're the speaker, obviously you're gonna be focusing on, you know, am I giving the right introduction? But I really want you to be paying more attention when you are the listener. And I want you to listen intentionally. Listen for understanding. Listen not to respond. And there should not be um, an, a, a, an exchange of information, really. It should be just a one-way communication. That's what I want to say. It should be a one-way communication um, in this uh, exercise, okay? So let me go ahead and get the rooms set up. Where did they go? Ah, come on. Uh, breakout rooms, there we go. And uh, we've got about 40 people, 35 people. So, okay. Uh, open all rooms. Okay. And um, we have 30 okay. people without the three of us. Yep. Okay. So, all right. I'm, I'm sorry, guys. It looks like I'm not doing it right here. Give me just a moment. Let me try again. How long will these rooms be open for? About three or four minutes, not long. Enough time for you, each of you to share your, your 30 second introduction and then, um, uh, and, and then come back or, or swap and then come back together. Um, all right, I apologize. I am definitely having problems with this technology right now. We tried it out earlier. There we go. Recreate, that's what I need to do. Recreate. And we've got 30, so we'll come down to there and sign automatically. There we go. Okay, and open all rooms. All right, so you all should be set into rooms now. Okay, and everybody should be joining their rooms. Just hit the join room. Okay. And Merle, do we see everybody has gone into rooms or we got a couple Abby, people? Abby Cohen hasn't joined. Um, she may be, because her camera's off her, so she might not know. She has to hit join. And Wilma just came on. Wilma, right. I see you there. So Wilma, you didn't, she came on after you assigned the room. So I don't know if you have to assign her to a room now. I'm sorry about that. Thank you. That's all right. Whoop. Whoa. Wish I looked like that. That's just you and me, but you're not in a room. You're supposed to be in a room. I'm roomless. Okay. All right. So Wilma and, and uh, Nell, why don't you guys just go ahead and do this right here in this room since we didn't have enough rooms open at the moment. Um, so I want you to just share with each other your 30 second intros um, one at a time and remember to listen with intention. So Nell has her camera and her, her audio off. So I wonder if she's even there. <laughs> Wilma, you want to do 30 center, your 30 second uh, elevator pitch oh, for Can you, can you see my gorgeous hair and everything like that? Oh, your camera's oh. off. I can hear you, but I can't see you. Well, some days you can, what you can hear is better than what you can see. All right, well then go <laughs> do it. Oh, Nell disappeared. <laughs> uh, good morning, Wilma Hurwitz in Montclair, New Jersey. Uh, working largely in publicity, public relations, uh, marketing communications, trying to get people out there with their noses powdered and looking good. I uh, have worked uh, extensively with public relations firms formally in New York and putting together events, programs like that. In these turbulent times, I find that affiliation with excellent groups like you 
is a great way to keep my stuff together and hopefully bring some uh, good new ideas to um, the activities you're doing. I have a follow on to what Paul is doing here, but I want to see how Paul sets us up for the networking kill. Wilma Hurwitz, thank you. Excellent. You've never practiced that before, have you? No, you can tell. I think Paul went off to another room, so it's just me and you here at the moment. I have a practiced one hiding somewhere here. It's okay. Uh, uh, let me do. My technology is giving me a lot of tourists. You know from that? You and everybody else, this is the world. Right. If it isn't the technology, it's something else. So, Wilma, uh, if I'm going to interrupt for a second, and, and Merle, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I think it's okay if we, I do this with Wilma in the room with us. Um, I see Alan Cantoritz. I'm not sure I'm saying that correctly. Yeah. Alan. Post, posted in the chat. This is nonsense. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I saw that, and I'm not sure what that meant. Is he still on the call, or did he uh, disappear? I, you know what, I haven't looked to, to see that specifically. Uh, but... I don't see him in the rooms. He must have left. I don't know. Okay. All right, whatever. I don't, I his, didn't. I his saw loss. That. What does that mean? Yeah. Haven't you yeah. shoveled that snow behind you, Paul? Say it again. Haven't you shoveled some of that snow behind you? Nope. So and Paul, I'm not the going problem to... is that room 10 and room 13, and it's probably almost time to bring them back, but they both only have one person in them. Oh, okay. that's, that's a problem. Yeah. How did that happen? I know, Carol Rivera and- You Paul. know what? I, I bet whoever was in their room either left. dropped out or left right. or something. Yep. Yeah, probably. All right. So I'm going to broadcast the message to everybody. So don't take it poisonal. I'm back in 60 Nice seconds. to see you, Meryl. How are you doing? Hanging in there. That's about all, all of us can see. Mm -hmm. Jurgen, good morning. How are you? Jurgen, you're, you ended up in a room with no one but yourself? Exactly. It was room number 13, so I figured that was lucky. No, I think <laughs> what happened was there was probably someone there, and then they dropped out. So, uh, well, sorry. Hopefully next time you'll have a, a roommate. <laughs> but you know what? Real real quick, share your, your introduction yeah, with Wilma or, or yeah. Merle. Sure. Okay. So, uh, good morning. I'm Jurgen Hebeling. I make sure your organization is cyber secure, cyber resilient, and regulatory compliant. I help your company bat away the bad guys. I'm currently employed as an information security consultant and assessor and looking for a fractional information security officer or consulting role in manufacturing or software engineering. I will help you get from, I will help you get to CMMI level four and CMMC ready. Jurgen Hebeling. Okay, so for my only feedback, and Paul, let's see what you can do to help him. For someone who doesn't know what he's talking about, I didn't know what he was talking about. I got at the beginning, when you started yep. with the cybersecurity, and I was like, okay. And then it went off to technical stuff that I was clueless about. So yep. what would he do differently if he was doing this with a group of people who weren't tech people? Yeah. Um, and that would really be a different conversation. Um, okay. I, I'm sorry. I'm just, my head is so focused on the listening piece. I'm, I, I don't want to get into the other side at the moment. Um, all right. So we should all be back. I would love to hear from just one or two people what your experience of the listening was like. Anybody want to share what, what their experience of the listening was like? I'll share something. Go ahead, Sam. Um, I was with Nancy and both. And now, first of all, Nancy and I sort of know each other from doing this for a long time. But um, the the thing we both noticed was it's we, we, we drifted during it. We, we start thinking about Nancy. Nancy put it well in mind. She's listening to what I'm looking for. She goes, well, you should, I'm thinking you should check here. You should check there. You should... <laughs> Yeah, and uh, I was doing something similar. I'm hearing her talk, and she, and she, she it's, and then she started talking about something else, and I'm thinking to myself about her talk. I'm going, well, this shouldn't be here in her pitch. So, so what you're seeing is, and that's a great example. Thank you, Sam. Is that it's not easy to listen just for the sake of listening. 
It's not easy to listen intentionally for the purpose of understanding because we're so programmed, as Carol said earlier, to want to listen for response, right. to be able to talk right. because it's all about me. It's not about you. And just make sure you remember that all the time, right? And, and that's what we have to combat when we're um, doing the listening. Go ahead, Faye, and then I want to move on. Paul, what I want to say. No, no, Michael, Michael, I'm sorry. I asked Faye to speak. Okay, sorry. I love taking notes. And I have been trying to train myself to not take notes so that I can listen more actively. And my hand wanted to pick up the pen so badly, but I didn't. <laughs> um, but that goes to the thing of when I'm listening, I am absolutely apprehensive that I am going to miss some key thing um, and then I go back and I'm like, oh my God, what, what? And I get really nervous that I didn't take the notes. So I'm just saying. Okay. And you know, there are people that they need to have that note taking capability in order to better listen and understand, right? What I would challenge you is um, start listening, right? And then as the person is talking, you know, and, and this will come up in the, one of the next two exercises. But when the person is talking, take a moment to stop them and say, all right, so I understand this is what you were just saying. And while you're saying that, you can be writing down your note, right? And it gives you a chance to kind of do a little bit of both. Um, Michael, if you can be 30 seconds or less, uh, I'll take your comment now, but I got to keep moving. All right. Um... Basically, I think I did something I never did before is I felt like my mind was recording the words. She Good. would say something and I would say that word in my mind. And, I, you know, and that, I had never really tried that before, but it, it seems like that's what active listening felt like, you know, to me. Well, and that's the intentional listening was making that recording. You're right. So excellent. That, that's great. Excellent. All right, let's move on to reflective listening now, okay? And it's defined really as um, seeking to understand the, the speaker's ideas by reflecting back or responding back saying, I heard you say, my understanding is you mean, right? So I'm listening with intention. And then just as I said to... Uh, Carol or Faye, Faye, I think it was a minute ago. Now I'm reflecting back to you. I'm giving you in my words what I heard you say to make sure that there's the understanding that we want. All right. So especially in terms of a, a networking situation, the more often you repeat the other person's name, the more likely you are to remember that name. So as you're reflecting back, you know, use that. So Merle, I understood you to say this. Is that really what you meant, Merle? Right. And now it seems a little awkward to use the name that often, right? But it's okay. People will get past it because you know what? The best sound in the world to any individual is the sound of their own name. So the more often you say my name, the better I feel about you, the more I like you, the more I want to be with you, right? So don't be afraid to use my name as often as you want. Okay. Reflective listening, as it says here, shows interest in understanding in what the person is speaking about. And it gives you a chance to really focus and center on the speaker rather than on yourself. Questions on reflective listening. Oh, did I go backwards? Nope. I just got the wrong title there. I got to change that. Okay. Requ questions on reflective listening, anyone? I, I have a, a little challenge to that, and, and I'd love to hear what you have to say. Okay. I, I, I have, for a long time, used the, the name trick <laughs> of, um, of, you know, speaking people's names, you know, often in speech and in writing, actually, too. Um, and I find it helpful a lot of times. But then I realized that when people do it back to me, it does not work that well. 
I and and I I can be a little bit eccentric and unusual. I know, but I imagine that I'm not that unique. <laughs> that there are plenty of people like me when you for, say they when you say they when they do it back to me, it doesn't work. What does that mean? I feel uncomfortable when people use my name too much. Very okay. uncomfortable. Like the more yes. they use my name, the more uncomfortable I feel. And sometimes I can feel uncomfortable even the first time that they say my name. Okay. And, and as I said initially, that sometimes it does seem or feel a little awkward to repeat the name as often as that. In the end, it's okay. Um, I would challenge you to, to think about why that makes you uncomfortable. And oh, I do. <laughs> I know why. <laughs> what, okay, and I don't want to know. That's, <laughs> that's okay. not, that's not for today. <laughs> I understand. But, but um, you know, in the vast majority of people, hearing your name is the thing that makes you feel the most comfortable and that makes you feel the best. So um, it's nice when people use your name. Okay, Wilma, go ahead and then we'll move up. Um, going back, I'm not sure where you were, but many times I do not let people finish. My, I hit a word and then I've already been finishing their sentence which of course is definitely not listening. Did you cover right. that yet? It is a part of intentional listening to yep. not interrupt the individual. You're absolutely right. And I have that problem as well. I do it constantly. And, you know, as with a lot of things, right? Awareness is 50% of the answer. So that we are aware of it means that we'll be more um, likely to try and stop ourselves. But that's the next step is now that we know we're doing it, when we recognize it's happening, we've got to stop ourselves. And I right now find myself quite often actually saying, oh, I'm sorry, I was going to interrupt you. You finish. Yes. Or I'd like or to, can I take this point and work with it? Sometimes things come at you in a jumble of, I wouldn't want to diagram the sentence that's coming at me. Yep. I also wouldn't want to diagram the sentence I'm trying to put back to them, which is probably full of things I want to say, but have nothing to do with what they just said. Thank you. Sam, last comment, and then I got to move on. Go ahead. Okay. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry, Jürgen. Jürgen. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, just jumping on uh, the comment a second ago. Uh, so when you recognize that you're uh, um, jumping into somebody's sentence and uh, you recognize that that's a good that's not a good thing to do. What is the proper way of uh, uh, handling that? Uh, personally, I say, uh, oops, sorry, didn't mean to jump in on. Is that okay? Or is there a, a more elegant way of uh, dealing with that? You know, I, I don't know that there is a specific right or best way to do it. The key is that when you recognize you've done it, acknowledge it and apologize and then step back and let the other person finish. That, that, that's really the way I would I would approach mm -hmm. that. And at least that's what I try and do. So- Paul, oh, just look. really quick question. So is there a tactful way, if someone keeps interrupting you when you're speaking, is there a tactful way to say to them, hey, you know, I'm speaking? <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, again, you you want to just be polite you may have to let them interrupt and finish their interruption maybe make a quick response gee that's right or no what i meant was but let me also go back and finish this is what i was saying before right and kind of you know rehash it a little bit um the key is that we all just need to be aware that we're interrupting someone and yep. work really hard not to do it all right, so let's go back into our breakout rooms again, and I'm, hopefully I'll be able to do it more easily and quickly. This time, you should hopefully be with a different person. And I'd like you to be practicing with bo practicing both your intentional listening and reflective listening. So I'm going to give my 30 second introduction. You are going to listen with intention when I'm done you're gonna reflect back by saying, this is what I understood you to, to say, or this is what I understand you to be, 
right? And in your own words, you're going to introduce that person to themselves. Okay. So let's see if we got somebody there. Let's get them admitted into the room. Now let's come over here, breakout rooms. And we have 33 people. Okay. So I need to recreate. Us. Yep. That's all right. We're going to do that. Assign automatically and recreate. Am I listening to someone? Open, open all the rooms. Okay. You should be able to go to your rooms now and. Everyone um, can join. I'm sorry? No, I was just telling everyone to go join. Okay. Okay, let's see. Except for room 16, they appear to all have two people. I guess. We okay. Don't Why don't you go ahead and join room 16 then, uh, Merle? All right. Yeah, sure. You want me to join it? How do I do this? I'll move to. No. Uh, no, no. When you scroll down to room 16, there's that join. Um, yeah, so I hit join and then I'll go join. There. Yeah. Okay. Yes, there we go. Hi, Jackie. Jack, Jackie or Jacqueline? Oh, Jackie. Oh, I'm, I think I'm on, am I on the, I think I might be on the wrong thing. Nope, I'm bringing everybody back to, to the main room. We were in breakout rooms. Oh, sorry. Okay, yes, that, that, I'm very late okay. to join. Okay. That's okay. That's okay. Sorry, sorry, sorry we weren't here. Meeting. That's okay. I'm sorry I wasn't here when, when you joined to, to say hello and, and let you know what was going on. Yeah, no, no worries. Sorry to be so late. So as we're waiting for everybody else to come back, anybody have some feedback and, and thoughts on the addition of reflective listening to the intentional listening? I do. Go ahead, Sam. Thank um, you. My, my sense was that because I had to do the reflective, I was actually listening more intently. <laughs> okay. That makes sense. That makes sense. But... Paul, one thing I noticed when you're doing one-on-one -on -one Zoom with someone, it's easier to listen than when you're in someone's office and you're sitting across the desk from them and you're seeing all these things in the environment, wondering what they're all about. That becomes yes. distracting. So it's one of the, the joys of Zoom, right, is we have far fewer visual distractions. And so we can stay more focused on the individual that is in front of us, even if they are in front of us on a camera. Uh, good, Paul, good point. And, Great. And, and yet I experience completely the opposite effect. <laughs> I find that because I'm sitting in, in here and you can't see anything else that's going on, I can be I can be distracted by this. And, and you talked about it with your with your with your with your husband in the other room. Yeah. You know, it, it's a two-way street. Doing all of these you don't know, and, and and that takes away from the intentional listening and the ability right. to reflect. And all, all of these things are, are two-way streets, you know, so that they do impact in both directions. Um, anyone else have any any thoughts, uh, reflections on what this experience was like now this second time, adding the reflective listening into your listening skill? Yes, I do. Go ahead, Carol. Oh my goodness. 
it takes a lot of effort. It's just such a yes. mental, it's such a mental drain. And I'm like not even halfway to my coffee. And I'm just like, oh my goodness. Um, and not to say that the person I, I spelt with, you know, it, it's just the, f it, it was anything wrong with the communication. It's just trying to just sit still. You really start to see your tendencies. Good. It's and, terrible. And, <laughs> you're, and you are, you are right on target, Carol. You know, because we learn to listen at such an early age and we don't really focus on the science, if you will, as well as the art of listening. When we are put in situations like this where we are really concentrating on the art and skill of listening, it is a lot of work. What I can tell you, Carol, is that the more you practice it, the easier it becomes, the less energy that it takes. Um, you know, somebody was saying they have difficulty remembering names and so they use the, the repeating the person's name constantly. I think it was Anne maybe who said that. And as I have practiced that and practiced focusing on you when you are speaking, it's helped me to remember the name more and associate the name to the person. And so I'm doing a better job. It's easier for me to do it over time, right? As a coach, listening is everything to my skill. If I am not a good listener, I will not be a good coach. So over the, the last five or six years, as I've really focused on this craft and learned to, to listen better, it's become much, much easier. So I would encourage you, to remember, if you haven't, maybe take the notes of the three types of listening we're going to talk about, the intentional and reflective that we've already done, and now the uh, interactive or, or uh, inquisitive that we're going to add into it. And before you get into a meeting, maybe just remind myself, I need to think about my listening skills, and that will help you to make it easier to do in the future. So great comment. Thank you, Carol. Okay, so let's um, let me share one more time. We're going to go into one more aspect of listening now, and that is the inquisitive or active listening. Um, oftentimes, people will call it, it's, it's curious listening, and this is what we often do more than anything else when we're listening, because we're finally now have the opportunity to ask a question. Right. So someone's going to introduce themselves to you. And, you know, I love you, Charlotte. Ann. you're going to tell us all about how you're a corporate risk uh, modeling manager. And we're going to go all go, huh? And then you're going to say, oh, it's all about the credit scores like for you with with credit karma. But I do it for companies and banks. And we're going to go, oh, we get it. Right. So it's that listen, the, the asking questions for clarification that we're gonna add into our listening skill at this point, okay? Um, inquisitive listeners, they always are listening intentively and reflectively. They're asking probing questions. It's never a yes, no question. It's always a question that gives a longer answer when you're actively listening. Um, so it's tell me more about, what did you mean by, right? Um, Active listeners are also saying, okay, this is what I understand from my experience. How does that fit with what you were saying, right? And, and comparing those commonalities that we may have or maybe trying to find the commonalities that we didn't know we had, okay? So active listening, questions about active listening. Um, Who was that? Go ahead. It was Diana. I have a question. Yes. So the active listening is coming. We're, we're actively listening to the interviewer. We're actively listening to the other person as they introduce themselves to you. When, so we're I'm, going to keep... I'm, I'm confused about the roles here. So my yeah. role in listening, I'm confused now because my That's... role in listening now is at, I'm pretending I'm the interviewer and the other person is introducing themselves to me. Okay, so so you're gonna you're gonna swap. You're gonna play both sides, okay? But let's let's do it this way. You you and I are in the room together. 
in the breakout room together. You're going to introduce yourself to me. My job is to intentionally and reflectively listen as well as inquisitively listen, All right? So you're gonna give me your 30 second introduction and I'm gonna say, all right, this is what I think you meant. Here's my understanding, right? There's the reflection. Could you tell me more about this aspect of your introduction so that I understand it better, All right? Then we're gonna reverse roles and I'm gonna give my 30 second introduction. You're gonna reflect back what you heard and you're gonna maybe ask me a question to clarify what I said. Okay, is that helpful? Yes, and it, it makes it more, um, it makes it more sense to me at the moment. <laughs> I was getting a little confused, thanks so much. That, that's fine, any other questions? Okay, and this will be our last breakout session. Um, so in case you're concerned or wondering, okay, so Paul, we're getting to the I'm end. I'm gonna stop you for a second. This way we'll hold on to everybody. Before we go into this last breakout session, I think that I'm going to, I just posted in the chat box, the evaluation for the program. I know it's not over yet, but I think you can probably come up with an evaluation with what you've learned so far. So we're gonna take three minutes now because I don't wanna lose attention and don't go away because we're gonna have another breakout session where you can practice and then they'll definitely- Perfect time for Paul. So everybody click on that. We're going to take three minutes and Nancy Aronson is going to be our timekeeper. And I'm going to go find my little Spotify list so I can play a little music. So everybody go do the, and I, we have 35 people in the room. I want to see 30 evaluations. We're a small group. So I want everyone to fill it out. Thank you. Trying to open it. Mm. If you can't open it, then cut and paste it. Much better than listening to me try to <laughs> sing it. God bless Spotify. No, Nancy, that was priceless, and I'm <laughs> so glad that I got to experience that. <laughs> and it was recorded, I guess, too. So it's there for posterity. Oh. <laughs> there for posterity. <laughs> Two minutes left. And if you don't feel like you can complete it now, that's fine. Go back later. It'll still be there. How much time left? One minute to go. Oops, went on to the next song. <laughs> Oh, goodness, I didn't leave my name. You don't know it's me. Thirty seconds. I did it. Okay. So hopefully you've all done that. And as I put in the chat, um, you know, the, the evaluations are really, really important on um, multiple levels, not the least of which is 
that it really helps JVS understand whether or not the programming they're offering is of value. Um, but it also is helpful for me as a speaker when Merle shares the, the feedback with me to know how I can improve on my craft and be a better presenter. So uh, I really appreciate you all taking the time to do that now. And I look forward to, to seeing those anonymous responses back. So thanks. All right, I'm going to uh, open up the breakout rooms in just a second. As a reminder, we're going to practice all three types of listening. We're going to listen with intention. We're going to reflect back what we heard, and we're going to be inquisitive and ask questions on that which we don't understand. We're going to take an extra minute or two in the breakout rooms this time, because it's with that inquisitive piece added to it, it's going to take longer. However, I do want you to focus on, as the speaker, my introduction needs to be 30 seconds. No Try chance. not to get it too long, much past that 30 seconds. Okay. And here we go. So there are a few rooms that have three people in them. That's okay. Um, I think what happened is uh, we, I thought uh, 16 rooms would be enough and we needed a couple of extras, but that's okay. Um, Wilma, have you not been able to get into your room? Yeah, Carol's waiting for you, Wilma. <laughs> Marlon, do you have any uh, questions or problems with getting into your room? I don't know what the Michigas is here, but- uh, Hit join. Well, you see it says join, hit join. I, I've done- okay. Okay, um, so let's see what we can do here. Speaking some people. And Marlon's in a room of him by himself. Yeah, uh okay, so Marlon went to his room. Let me see if I can, oh, Wilma, you should be in. Okay, let's Carol. see, can I, right, move. Yeah, I'll go join Marlon, let him go practice with me. Oh, Marlon just left, but I'm doing. Okay. Okay. Marlon, so, go back to the room and I'll join you. Can you hear me? Okay. Oh. Marlon just left, I think. 15, there we go. Uh, okay. Oh, and now you got into 14 and I just moved somebody else out of it. So I'm going to move you to another room, Wilma. <laughs> uh, let's move Wilma to 13. There we go. Hey, see, I'm getting better Ray at this now, too. We only has one person in it. Who move? does? In room three, there's one person. Can you move? Oh, oh, her? let's move her to room four, then. Great, great. Go. Yeah, no, but I'm, I'm... Oh, you moved Lily to room four. Got it. Okay. Right, right. Got it. I know this there, is... There we go. All right. Now everybody's got someone to talk to. Yeah, so this is working out okay, you know, and, and, and we're both learning to, to use the rooms better. So that, that's, that's good. Um, and what time do we need to be done? Now it's up to you. Um, you know, usually the official stop time is 1130. Um, okay. some, some people say 1145. Some, my hard stop is 12. I won't go past 12. So it's really up to how much time you have now for questions. We'll, all right. So, um, yeah, there's not much of a wrap up. Um, we'll just kind of have people give their feedback, one or two people give their feedback to what they learned in this go around. Uh, and then um, we can go to Q&A and also say, you know, at any point, if you need to leave, feel free to leave. Right. And then I just tell them about the next program. Which amazingly enough, I actually have the next three programs all lined up. I'm so excited. Do you know <laughs> Jeff Young, the LinkedIn guru? No. So I'm, I actually met him. I went to, at the end of the year, I went to Ken Lang's, he had like a LinkedIn, you know, what's changed this year. I don't usually go to his stuff because I don't have yeah. time. But I figured, let me see what's new. And he had a panel and Jeff was on it. He's out in Detroit. Um, and he does this, he's retired. This is his second career, but he does it totally pro bono. He gets paid for none of nice. his presentations. And he really knows his stuff. 
And he's actually going to do two LinkedIn presentations. One, the first one, which is next week, two weeks, which is what's new on LinkedIn and why should I care? Um, and then the last set, two weeks later or whatever, we're going to do part two. And it's mostly going to be like asking him questions about LinkedIn. But really nice guy. And I, I looked at his LinkedIn profile and there was no work history on it. And I like for the last 10 years and I was like, or 15 years. And I said, well, how is this guy supporting himself? <laughs> Must have done really well because he retired at like 55. Um, or 50 and he's been doing this and it's amazing and he is the expert so I figured okay you know one of the things people always can learn more about LinkedIn yeah good to have I, more I'd be curious for you to tell me what um, what he is good about it you know what what do you like about his uh, presentation well I haven't heard him present he was on the panel answering questions no no when after this after yeah, he goes for you I'll see yeah. what he's like I know so, um, um, yeah, so this is my constant, especially now that I don't have a, a second in command here, just trying to fill the, we used to do before, before COVID, we were only doing these programs once a month. And then from March till July, middle of July, 2020, we were doing them weekly. And that right. was crazy. Um, and, and even just getting, besides getting the speakers, just getting the flyers and getting the advertising and everything sure. else. And then we went to every two weeks and I was just thinking about it. I have our fiscal year ends at the end of June. And I'm thinking I may tell those people about me that starting in July, we should go back to once a month. I mean, maybe by then we'll be live or mixed. I would love to go eventually hybrid if we could get the technology, make it live, but also have it, you know, be able to watch if they can't get there. Um, but um, I don't know. Who knows what's going to be with COVID in the next couple of months. So we'll see. I mean, a year I, ago, we were all getting you know, our vaccines. We all thought, oh, by next year, everything will be back to normal. The hybrid, the hybrid is a tough one to do. Mm -hmm. um, and you'll probably need yourself plus at least one, if not two other people sure. to manage the technology. Oh, for um, sure. And, and a part of what makes it tough, my church has been doing this. I don't know if your synagogue has, but my church has been doing this. And... Um, we try and make it as interactive as possible for the church service. And we try and do networking beforehand and afterwards. The hard part is the people online can network with each other really well. The people in person can network with each other really well. You can't. The two groups can't interact very well. They can't. So. And, and it can be done but it takes a lot of technology and it takes some very talented, dedicated people to managing that technology to make it work. Um, I, I participate as a um, member of the advisory board for my university's uh, College of Psychology and Liberal Arts. And they try and do a hybrid meeting for that. We've got about 30 people on the, the advisory board half of them are in Florida, the other half are on Zoom. And there's always issues with, can the Zoom folks hear what the people in the, the yeah. room in Florida are saying? Right. And then how do we interrupt them to get our comments and points in? You know, and, and it's been really, really tough to have an effective meeting because they don't have enough people managing the technology and and so and one of the the roles is someone needs to be literally watching all of the zoom interactions and then stopping the room to bring the zoom can person into the conversation yeah, i was i've been in one or two meetings where i because i had broken my i had a stress fracture in my foot and i couldn't drive it was my right foot so i was in one or two meetings first of all everybody who was there was wearing a mask so that even made it harder to hear everybody. And I yes. was home and they, but it wasn't, they were using like, basically they just had someone's like phone on FaceTime or whatever it was. It wasn't using sophisticated, you know, meeting yes. kind of stuff. But yeah, half the meeting, I couldn't hear what was going on. I kept texting someone who was in the room and saying, what did they just say? What did they just say? But, when, my, when my son was home, um, doing Zoom for school and they were hybrid, the teachers, whether you were in the classroom or at home, Everybody was learning on their computer. Everybody logged into the Zoom classroom or the right. Google classroom, and the teacher taught as if everyone was on the technology. 
I'm going to end the rooms and you now let's give them 60 seconds to finish. Okay, sounds good. But uh, that's it's tough. It's very, very tough. Eula's back. <laughs> yeah, Eula, and there's Patricia. Hello. We're getting into it. <laughs> So Patricia, how did this um, experience work for you guys? Well, I was with Abby, so she provided lots of uh, insightful information to me. So it was great. <laughs> it's great to get a professional in the room with you. <laughs> All right, uh, stop sharing for a second so that I can see if everybody's back. And here they come. The masses are arriving. Okay. Whoa, someone just made a lot of noise. Yeah, Cynthia's outside. God oh, okay. bless you for being out there, Cynthia. Okay, um, we're just about at the home stretch here. So I, I'd love to get uh, one or two people to give us some feedback on how this experience was adding in the inquisitive learning or listening to the process. Anybody want to share? I think, I think, may I? Sure. Go ahead. Um, I, I think I do better when I'm the curious one. Um, I, I, I feel like I, I want to learn and I want to get to know. And so my questions seem to come a little bit more naturally in this part of the process than, than the other first, than the first two. It is because we, we are more adept and, and typically because we're looking to listen to respond rather than to listen, we're, you know, already attuned to let me ask a question so I can then tell you what I think, right? So I'm, I'm already primed to want to learn more so that I can then give you my feedback or tell you. My, ah, my that's where it comes from, you see, but that's where, that's where the, the, the listen to respond comes in. The right. actual listen to respond comes in. Right. So, uh, Kathy, go ahead. You've got your hand raised. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, interesting about uh, this program in regard to focusing on listening while you're networking. Very often, I would think of sort of job search or career search or career work as, you know, so focused in relating to interviewing. So, you want to tell people about yourself and you want, but this is about the networking component of that, that effort and how important listening is in that, as opposed to interviewing you know, or networking and listening and listening and networking, as opposed to conveying and talking about yourself in interviewing different. Thank you. I, I would argue that Okay. The listening is as or more important yeah. during the interview because if you really take that time to stop and listen to what the, the interviewer is asking you and pay attention to their body language, listen intently to the words they use when they're describing the position and other things, you will find you're learning a lot more about the role and probably changing your response to the question based on the intentional listening that you've done. So, so thank you for that thought, but I, I think we can use it in both scenarios. No, I, th I think you're totally right. And I appreciate that. I think I was just thinking about where we're, what we're focused on in the process. Yes. I, I get that, really good, thank you. Yeah. Paul, there's a, a question in the chat box. Renee wrote, any tips for listening to speakers with a heavy accent like Indian? I work with a lot of folks in tech. Do you interrupt and ask them to repeat without being rude? Merle, thank you for reminding me to come back to that because I saw it as well and I wanted to make sure we came back to it. So um, first off, let me, let me start by saying this. If you are responding to an individual <clears throat> or speaking to them from a place of true care and concern and desire to to learn, and you're authentic about that, mm -hmm. 
you can interrupt them appropriately, politely, and say, I'm having a little difficulty understanding what you're saying. I think because you're speaking faster than I can listen. Could you slow down just a little bit and maybe pay a little more attention to your diction so that it's easier for me to understand what you're saying? Now, Jean, if I can put you on the spot, if I were to say that to you, because let's face it, you have a pretty heavy accent, right? I do. If, yes. if I were to say that to you, how would you feel? So if, if you were to approach it the way you just did, I would be more receptive. Otherwise, I would remind you that you, every human being has an accent. And that is your fault not to learn how to focus on listening. Because the way you hear me is the way I hear you. So if I make an effort to hear you, but you should be polite enough to do the same for me. Yes. So, and then it becomes contentious. You know, you know yeah. It snowballed from there and not in the right direction. Yes. And, and by the way, you know, I often feel like when I'm listening to um, non-native English speakers, it feels and sounds to me like they're talking really fast. Right? But the truth is, especially here in the Northeast, in the New York area, we all talk fast. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And and just as much as Jean, in this case, again, I'm just picking on you, Jean, so I please appreciate that, right? <laughs> it's, it's a good fun, good fun, yes. <laughs> just as much as Jean is having difficulty understanding us because we speak so fast and it's not native for him to hear our language, the same is true for us, right? And, and so if all of us were to slow down just a little bit, we might actually get to say a lot more because we wouldn't be repeating ourselves half as much. And you have a question, Anna. I do. Um, yes, I wanted to add to what Jean has said. Thank you, Jean. That's awesome <laughs> that you brought up the the other part about you know hearing, not just talking. <laughs> But um, I have lived in a few different foreign countries myself, and really all people needed ever to say to me was, slow down and take your time. I really want to understand you. And when yes. you said that, done, like mission accomplished. I am happy to slow down. All I can do is like, I'm just so stressed at this moment, and I'm trying to express what I need to express to you. And um, yeah. if, if you just say, slow down, I want to understand you. And like you said, you know, and you mean it, that's really all you need to say. Great. Thank you, Anna. Like all right, I've, got, I've got just a couple of quick more slides, and then we're going to open the floor to any further questions and, and finish our program here. Um, first off, good listeners are far better at creating connections between people. And the better we do at creating connections, the more people will be indebted to you for helping them. Therefore, the more they will want to help you. You've created a stronger network, a stronger relationship, and you, you're building on your opportunities, right? Always try to be remembered for being the one that brings people together. And if you've listened intently and reflectively to their 30 second introduction, you should be easily able to introduce them to another person, right? So you wanna always be the one that are bringing people together. Uh, one of the consultants that I worked with once used to say, that that's a rainmaker. The person who is bringing the people together is the rainmaker. And, and I love the graphic of the rain with the money because that's what will happen is if you are the one bringing people together, you're gonna be the one that ultimately will get the more money. And, and as an aside to this, um, where I've seen this value dramatically for my business actually is in LinkedIn. It wasn't until I started actually commenting on other, other people's posts and, sh and, and, and also commenting back to those people who commented on my posts 
in essence, start creating the conversation that I began to see the value of LinkedIn networking, because now I was in a stronger relationship with the people that are talking to me and me talking to them through our LinkedIn posts. And it made it easier for us to do business together in the future. So it's just something to think about. Um, just some upcoming presentations that I've got going on. Um, I, I think we decided, and I have to change this slide, for uh, Valentine's Day with PSG CNJ, we're going to do the same topic um, as April 21st, the evolving employment model, managing your career in the ongoing COVID environment. And um, a couple people heard that conversation on Wednesday uh, at PSG Morris County. Um, it's a great, great presentation. So if you're interested in any of these presentations and participating in any of them, please just let me know and I will be happy to get you connected to those. I do run a few uh, groups that may be of interest to you. If you know of anyone who's under 30, the Yojo Club. Um, and these are all peer support groups, except for PSG Mars County. The, the peer support groups work like this. Rather than a speaker presentation, what we'll do is everybody gets equal amount of time in the room. So if we've got 10 people and 90 minutes, everyone's gonna get nine minutes of the, the time that we're in the meeting. And the first minute or two, you give your 30 second intro on what's happening in your job search, focusing on what is your biggest challenge since we last met. And then the remaining time that you have seven or eight minutes is the group together brainstorming, how can we resolve that challenge for you? And I, as a facilitator, should do very little talking. So there's the Yojo Club, that's for folks under 30, outstanding careers for folks in the LGBTQ community to have a safe space, Mar Ex County Executives in Transitions for anyone, and Supply Side Seekers is for those who are in the supply and logistics, supply chain logistics uh, arena. So if you're interested in any of those, feel free to reach out to me. I put my contact information in the chat before, I'll put it in the chat again, but also here it is. And if you want the slides, feel free to reach out to me and let me know and I'll be happy to send them to you. Excellent. I have one last question for all of you. What is the number one thing you liked about this presentation or you take, you're taking away from the presentation? And I'd love to get three or four people just to, to give me that one thought. May that I? is one of the questions in the evaluation, but go ahead. Go ahead, Carol. <laughs> uh -huh. I liked the breakout room <clears throat> uh, part because, um, because of the nature of how we're meeting, it gives, gave me the opportunity to get to know um, others in the group. And I think it creates an atmosphere of intimacy, a sort of an intimate atmosphere where um, you feel more connected. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Go ahead, Faye. Yes, I thought I saw somebody else's hand going. Go ahead. I finally learned how to raise my hands and Zoom. Um, I really appreciated divvying up the three different types of listening. Perfect. I believe it helped me uh, when Nancy was speaking. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. And anyone else? No, I just wanted to share that uh, I'm finding out that combining the three types of listening makes one a better listener. Because when you listen to understand, when you use reflective listening to confirm what you've heard, and then when you use your curiosity to probe, to probe further, it, it makes the, the complete package. So thank you for that. Excellent, Jean. Thank you for taking that away. Appreciate it very much. Anyone else? Yeah, I'd like to confess, though, those three aspects are really hard. If you yes. Want to do <laughs> if you want to do it very well, good. It's very hard to do all three. You can take one and do better with another, but combine all three. I believe that it takes a lot of practice. And I thank you for sharing your insight with us, especially me. Um, but the one takeaway, I think it's good. This network, is, this forum is so great so we can share. 
Thank you. Fun. Thank you, Yulia. I, I, I really appreciate that comment. Um, uh, yeah, Kathy, One last. Go ahead, Kathy. No, no, I was just clapping to say thank you. Uh, okay. Oh, so I'm sorry. that's, um, we'll hold it. I, I, have thought, a question, I though. thought that was a hand. Go ahead, Ann. That's Anna. okay. Um, I just wanted to ask if it would be acceptable, Paul, if we could request the slides in the in the written in the chat. Um I'm gonna say a qualified yes. Okay. I've been very, very busy these last week or so, and next week I'll be on vacation. If you don't get it by say lunchtime tomorrow at the latest, even maybe this evening, send me an email to remind me because I may have missed it in the chat. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Sure. All right, wait, Patrick, before you answer your question, because there are people who are gonna start dropping off. So first of all, I want a round of applause from everybody. This was, as I knew was gonna be a great presentation. Paul, we can't thank you enough. Paul is one of the speakers that I've known a really long time. He volunteers for us all the time. He came when we were still live and in person. He reached out to me and offered his services without my going to him. So um, we're just so thankful that he has given you Thank this, you. I thought was amazing. And the breakout rooms is I think the best part because we, so in all these presentations, we don't have enough interaction. So I think that's wonderful. I just wanna give you guys all a coming attraction. Um, in two weeks, we have a man named Jeff Young. I don't know how many of you know him, but his tagline is the LinkedIn guru. And he mm -hmm. really is. I actually met him on a panel through Ken Lang, who's another LinkedIn guru. And he is also wonderful and is going to be presenting for us twice. Part one, which is in two weeks, is what's new on LinkedIn and why should we care, um, which I can't wait to hear. And then a month later, he's going to come back for part two, which we're calling Ask the Expert. Um, and it's really going to be a lot of, you know, give and take on LinkedIn questions, which I'm sure you all have. So you'll all get flyers for that. And we do have some programs in the middle. I just had to work around his schedule. Otherwise, I would have had him two weeks in a row. But, um, and then just one side note, and those of you who are new on this program, you didn't get it, but those of you who've been with us before, I sent out a survey um, without going into too much detail, I'm collecting data on how people feel about the job search that I'm going to be presenting at a program for business leaders, local business leaders, about what people think about how the job search process, you know, the interviewing process, the retention process, corporate culture, and I got very little response. I'm going to send it out again one more time to my entire list. So please look for it. Um, it's all anonymous. And basically, I'm presenting the data to these business leaders to inform them what you like and don't like about the whole hiring process. So I would be incredibly grateful if you could complete it. For those of you who are new, I'm going to wait until your names get into. We have a list. It's called the seminar list. The only thing you get from that list are our next programs. I don't send you anything else from that list, but I'm hoping that you'll get the fly, the survey. And for those of you who did complete the survey or on this call, thank you, thank you, thank you. But, and again, I hope that none of you are on the program in two weeks from now because you all landed jobs and that would be wonderful. If you land, I'd be incredibly grateful if you let me know because I love hearing good news and I just can't thank Paul enough. And so we'll see if anyone else has some more questions for Paul. But before anyone else drops off, I just want to tell you all to stay healthy and safe. Anna, you thank were you. talking? Yeah, Meryl, FYI, um, in that form, which I did do. <laughs> thank you. In that survey, um, at the top, it does ask you for your email. So people who may want to remain anonymous may have may have not filled it out because mm. they didn't want their name because to it. I obviously have all these people's email addresses or they wouldn't have gotten it to begin with. But okay. But I think that they didn't realize it was not clear that. it was going to you. So I might when I before I send it out again, maybe I'll make that an optional. I won't make that a required. So that's thank you, Anna. That's very helpful. All right. Um any more questions from Paul or comments or I think Patrick had a question. Yes Patrick. Go ahead, Patrick. Yes, uh, I wasn't going to uh, bring it up only because of the time constraint. But I, in the three inter in the three breakout rooms that I was in, I found that within the first 10, 15 seconds, both participants, myself and and the other person, tended to relax, and it became following the rules, but it became more conversational than it did formal. And, and the reason I bring that up is because 
and reflecting on it, and I and I asked the ladies the same thing in, in the course of the interview, that all the three aspects that you were asking for, you know, each individual one in each of the breakout rooms, all three of them came out in all three of the interviews I was involved with. And I think because the people relaxed after the first 10 or 15 seconds for whatever the reasons are. And I found that to be very useful. The only other one is one of the, the people I had to you know, interview with uh, for technical reasons had no picture you know, on the screen. So that made it to some degree, at least in my case, easier to focus uh, on what they were saying because I wasn't, and this may sound kind of odd, but I wasn't distracted by looking at them, you know, that kind of thing. But I, I found the relaxation piece very much enhanced the, the, the give and take and all three aspects of what we were looking for happened to actually come out in all three interviews once we all relaxed. That's all, that was my observation. Perfect, thank you, thank you. Barry, you had a question. It's a very quick one, actual, not even a question. I sent you an email to your email address that's on your screen behind you. Yes. And it came back. Okay. It said address not found. All right, let me uh, Wait, take a look at right? that. Uh, I, let me, I'll go take a better look at that and fix it, but let me put it into the chat so you have the uh, correct in the chat. Is there an A missing? Nope. Okay. I checked. P C E C A L A at C E C A L career. Ah, uh, yep. Yeah, it should yeah. be L A career. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Like, Thank you. LA, it's in your W W, but not in that one. Thank you. It. Thank you. It's on Thank your you. screen then. Okay. Wow. Uh, Sorry to. Good catch, Barry. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank Google because it came back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So the, the correct one is in the in the chat. So, but I will go Thank fix you. that right now. Thanks. Sorry. Thank you all for what is generally really good practice of listening skills, but the packaging and the way you broke people up in the groups, I think was superb because it confirmed how to try something on, see if it feels comfortable, put in appropriate tucks and darts and be able to walk out with it on. Okay, thank you, Wilma Hurwitz. Thank you, Wilma. Any other questions before we say goodbye to our speaker who's gone way over time? <laughs> um, I just want to say the one thing, though, that Barry, that was great because so often we have something wrong and we don't like check it till three weeks later. And then it's so I'm not thanking Google. I'm thanking you. <laughs> <laughs> and and what's, really, what's really fascinating about that is I have had that background now for about three weeks. And you're the first person, Barry, gotcha. to uh, catch that. So <laughs> kudos. That's right. Uh, you, you, you get the prize. In fact, I'll tell you what, Carrie, uh, yeah. Barry, sorry. Um, <laughs> if you would provide me your email address, I'm sorry, your mailing address. I will send you a copy of my book, oh, Work nice. Search Buddies, oh, Finding a Job with a Little Help oh. from a Friend. Okay. Well, thank you. I will send it to you. Uh, that's awesome. Please send my email again with a, with a mailing address. Perfect. <laughs> to the right address this time, though. I'd like that's to right. say that's very nice. That's very I'll nice. I'll take one thing Paul. quickly. Um, my partner, Carol McCullough, I think she already started helping me network, which was awesome. She Excellent. Was giving on different places to go to look for what I'm looking for and people's names. And it was like, wow, here it is in action. So thank you, Carol, so much for that. Carol um, is a master networker. Really. So thank you so much. And I want people to know that she's just right on it and helped me right away. There it is. Thank you so much. I always say it's about being in the right place at the right time, but you have to be all places all the time until one of them happens to turn into being the right place at the right time, so. You're absolutely right, yeah. All right, so I think it's time to say goodbye. You all stay healthy, please, and warm and safe. And if there's good news to share, share it. And if not, come on back in two weeks and learn some more and share some more and meet some other great people. I put it in the chat box, but don't forget to save the chat box before you log oh, off. Um, yeah, go to the three little it's dots and hit save chat again. And just everybody stay healthy and warm and safe and just have a great day, all right?
Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Connect with you guys. Have a safe uh, day and week.